This morning, I want to walk through Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 through 2, 12, and then we'll talk about God's gift for us. Listen to the words of Scripture. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child, child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who was born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go, search diligently for the child, and when you've found him, bring me the word that I may too come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary's mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. By the way, notice that there were not three kings there. They were wise men. There may be more than that. It probably wasn't the same night that Jesus was born. Uh, if you want a little more Christmas trivia, you're welcome to find that on your own, but not just three kings and probably not the same night Jesus was born. If you continue on in the story, Herod got really mad and decided that he was going to execute anyone under the age of two for safety's sake, so he probably thought Jesus was like nine to 15 months in there, would be my guess. But, you know, hey, that's where, just a guess on Herod. And maybe he was just in a fit of rage and knew that Jesus was three weeks old. So, All right. Looking like Christmas in this text. We've walked through Malachi as a church, looked at how the world was in need of a Savior. And notice when these three, or sorry, I'm so used to saying three already. Notice when these wise men come, that they bring gifts with great and exceeding joy, and they worship. Bowing before our Savior, they offered Him gifts. Him, the gift of God given for us, they brought him gifts as well. They brought him gifts as a response of worship and delight in who he was as offered by God. You know, when we give gifts to others, it shows that we often, shows that we care about them, shows what we know about them. It shows some things about them and what they might want or need. For example, I got my wife some some special cookies that can meet her special dietary needs with the weird way in which God has made her body. It shows that her body is weird and different. It shows that I know that, and it's a good thing, okay? She got me a coffee cup that stays at the right temperature. It's amazing, right? She got me that because she knows that I enjoy that, and I complain when my coffee's cold. I complain if it's too hot, so she knows I'm a complainer, so she got me one that I can set the temperature on, and it is good, okay? Okay. So, we know things about other people, and what we give shows some things about us as the giver and the recipient. When God sent Christ, he gave us so much. 
And this morning, I want us to walk through what God has given us in Christ and unwrap God's gift for us. As I mentioned last week, I'm going to need some assistance today. I have a feeling I'll probably need Pastor Sam's help at some point um, because, you know, he's just awesome at assisting at things. He's not as strong as me or as big as me, but every now and then we have to rely on him for some assistance as well. But I'm going to need some boys and girls to help me unwrap some things. So first, let me get out my marvelously wrapped present over here. We're going to unwrap this today. Notice the number of bows on it. Like the more bows, the better. I don't know about that, but we've got a lot of bows on here, and we've got a lot of paper on here to unwrap. So I need an assistant other than Pastor Sam. I know that he's going to help. Let's see. All right, come on up. Yep, you can come help us. Help me unwrap. Now, you got to be careful when you're coming up on the stage, and you got to be careful when we're unwrapping it because you never know when we're going to have something on the stage explode. Okay, so you just got to pay attention. You never know when it's going to be a trick and when it's going to explode or something like that. Does, does anybody's parents, like, wrap your presents in ways that are really hard to get into, by the way? No? Oh, okay. Yes. All right, come on up. All right, help me unwrap. You can assist in unwrapping in here, and there will be something in here that we can find, okay? All right, go ahead. The pink bow first. I'll help you with this. By the way, does anybody else, like as dad, take the bows off the presents and put them on yourself, and you're like, I am your present, okay? I'm totally your present. There we go. You don't have to save the bows. These bows can die. This morning in our house, like, the kids alternate from opening slowly to, like, shredding it like a dog digs in dirt and seeing what's happening here. But this one's a big one. There's some good ways to go. You want to go with this? Listen to that sound, the sound of present opening on a microphone. A box, just what we've always wanted. All right, what do we have in here? Say it out loud. What do you see? A box. Another box. Let's see. Oh, another present. All right, hold on, but there's something else in there. What else is in the box? All right, we can put this one down. And we have a lollipop and a Bible verse on here. Can you read this part for me? What does that say, Dina? John. John 14. 27. Pastor Sam, can you read John 14, 27 for us? And you guys give her a round of applause. Good job. Here, you can keep this. Good job, thank you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. So when we start talking about God's gift for us, that text tells us what has God given us. Boys and girls, what does God give us there? Yeah, Peace. He gives us peace. God's gift in Christ brings peace. It brings peace first with God. It brings peace with God. As 2 Corinthians talks about being reconciled to God. As we've walked through Romans, we've talked about finding the peace with God that we can only have because of Christ given for us. It is through Christ, God's gift, that our war against God can be settled. Now, I don't know about in your house, uh, but in my house, I have some children that think that everything should be a competition, a battle, or a war. And one of my kids received the game, a version of the game, Risk, and there will be a long and extensive war that will happen between the light side and the dark side and maybe a couple other sides. I don't know how you play Star Wars Risk, but we're going to figure it out. There will be a war, and there will be a battle. And the Bible describes that our sin against God brings us into battle with him. 
Now, I, for a minute, I need us to imagine. Jesse, will you stand up for a minute? Come up and stand beside Pastor Sam. All right, this is not a David versus Goliath battle. But if Jesse were to have to go to battle with Pastor Sam, he would probably need a sling and some stones to win that battle because he's not going to win that battle in any other way. All right, Jesse and Pastor Sam, you can take a seat. I bet you can't guess what kid's always at war. <laughs> when we're at battle with God for things that we have already done, it goes worse than this battle would. It goes worse than an infant against a giant because the all-powerful, all-eternal God, wrath of him against us for our sin, past, present, future, our rebellion against him as our king and creator is a big deal. So when God gives his son that we could be reconciled and made at peace with him, it is an incredible gift. Not only do we have, though, that peace with God, but we can have peace inside because we know that God is in control. All right, so the gift of God, as we unwrap his gift, we have peace with God that allows us to have peace with others and relationships we can have peace as the feeling of understanding God's in control. What else can we have? Let's see. Let's unwrap. I need another assistant. Come on up, dude. Come and assist with the unwrapping of the present. There are no bows. Let, hold on. I'll fix this for you. Now you have a bow. Here, I got it. Go for it. What do we have so far? A box. a box. Just what we've always wanted. There's a theme here. This one is a box for an APC power backup. Our sound crew in the back and tech guys are happy. The rest are like, what is that? And it's kind of what I wonder as well, but I found this box in the church office. We can open the box. It is not a battery backup. What are, you, what are we seeing? Another present. Another present. And? Yes. Hebrews? 4, 15, and 16. Hebrews 4, 15, and 16. All right, well, you go stand with Pastor Sam, and let's have him read Hebrews 4, 15, and 16. Or you guys can take turns. You guys tend to decide which way you want to do that. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. in time of needed. Great job. Very good. Give him a round of applause. We don't have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness. In the gift of God in Christ, what did God send? What package did God send the Savior in? Jesse, a baby, all right, and like a baby puppy, definitely not a cat, okay, but a baby, not a baby puppy, not a baby camel, not an alien, okay, God didn't send an alien, he sent a baby that grew to become what? A man, and as the rescuer, the gift of God, Christ the God-man knows what it is to be human, and yet to be without sin. He knows what it is to struggle. He knows what it is to feel weakness. He knows what it is to feel pain. He knows what it is to feel grief. He sent a high priest in the form of human 
as a child who grew to become a sinless man, in the gift of God, what we have is one who can identify with us, that we might identify with him, that we might be fully human, following Christ without sin, that we might follow in his steps, but ultimately that we might worship him in our place. He sent a rescuer in humanity, not from outside as a different form or as an alien or something else, but he sent a person in Christ that we could be rescued by him. For more reading, if you want to do that, if you're thinking theologically, why did God need to send a, a, a child to become a man? Why couldn't he have used an alien other than Hebrews 4, 15, and 16? Why did God need to become a man? You're welcome to look at Athanasius' work, A-T-H-A-N-A-S-I-U-S, Athanasius' work on the incarnation, the good work to work through why God needed to become a man. Why is that important? But for us from this text, in the gift of God, we have one that knows our weaknesses and yet was without sin that we can approach him, knowing him knowing us and in our place. In the gift of God, we have peace and we have one that can sympathize with us. What else do we have? Let's continue to unwrap presents here. I need somebody else. Let's see. All right, David, come on up. Jesse, you've been helping already. I'll let you in a minute. Answer another question. Oh, hold on. There you go. Thank you. All right, what do we have so far? A box. A box from? New Egg. New Egg box. This box brought to you by New Egg. And we have a, another box. All right. And? All right, go with Pastor Sam and please read for us 2 Corinthians 5, 21. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So according to this text, somebody other than Jesse, please, please help me. Oh, yes, give David a round of applause. All right, what do we have in the gift of God, as we unwrap the gift of God from that text, what do we have? Oh, okay, Jesse, help us out again. Eternal life, a little bit, but that's not really what this verse tells us. You don't have to just, yeah, turn on. Righteousness, that is exactly right, Okay. Right answer, in Christ we have the righteousness of God. We have the great exchange. It's good. All right, yes, my trick show is continuing. Okay, that's, that's the extent of it. We have the righteousness of God in Christ. As we unwrap what it is that God sent Christ for us, we have the righteousness of God. We have the righteousness of God in place of our sin. God made Christ, who was without sin, to take the punishment of our sin so that we could have his righteousness. We have a great exchange. This is better than any gift exchange you've ever participated in. This is, I give you my sin, you give me your right standing with God. In the gift of God, the Christ child, as we unwrap what it is that we have been given at Christmas and why we celebrate, we have peace with God. We have a high priest or one that knows what it is that can identify with us and us with him. And we have the righteousness of God exchanged for our sin. We have evidently something else. The package is getting smaller, okay? Right, come on up, come on, help me.
We have so much in the gift of God. Hold on, let's see. I think that you're going to enjoy a green bow. So here we go, a collection of bows. All right, you can open that for us. All right, we have a, what is this so far? A coffee box. Ah, this is a good gift. And in it we have? Another present. Another present. And? Let's see, do you know what that reference is? Can you read that for us? My writing is really bad, I know. Romans, and then our number six. Six, uh, six two three six twenty three. Will you go over there with Pastor Sam for Romans six twenty three? And you can tell him. Or you want him to read it. I want to read okay. <laughs> All right. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. All right. Give her a round of applause. And you guys can enjoy your lollipops at your parents' discretion whenever you want to. You can keep the bag, too. You can put whatever you want in that bag. Oh, man, I'm losing my bows. All right, Romans 6. So what do we have here that we receive when we unwrap God's present? We have what gift? Eternal life. Good, this one's an easier one. You guys got it. You have eternal life. In the gift of the Christ child, we have the gift of God, eternal life. For the wages, what we earn for our battle against God is death, eternal consequence. But the free gift of God, not something that we earn, is actually eternal life. The difference in what you earn and what you're gifted. You know, in my house, sometimes we pay our kids to do different chores. Let's say I negotiated with my kids to pick up all the leaves in the yard for $20. Reasonable deal on the kid level, okay? They pick up all the, de- and at the end, and I say, hey, if you guys will pick up the leaves, I'll do $20 and I'll buy you all Slurpees. Now we're talking, they'll, they'll, they'll agree to that deal. Okay, so they agree to that deal. At the end of it, I come up and I'm like, hey, you guys did a good job. I'm going to gift you $20 to share and Slurpees. And they're like, Dad, that's not a gift. That's what we earned. That's what we negotiated. That was our deal. What we have earned for our sin, what we have earned for our sin is eternal separation from the good presence of God and punishment. And yet what God has gifted us in response to what we earned is in Christ eternal life. As opposed to death, eternal life. That is what we've been gifted as we unwrap. All right, I need another assistant. All right, Jesse, come on up. Two bows, okay. Two bows, here we go. There you go. Okay, first bow. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah, it's an Amazon box. An Amazon box. And then there is another present, uh, another present, and a reference. But I can't read it because my dad's handwriting is so bad. What does that say? You can read that one. Uh, John ten twenty eight. John ten twenty eight, and we have another box. All right, go to Pastor Sam. All right, so that's right. I give them eternal life, and, and they will never perish, and no one will scratch them out of my hand. Good. Thank you, Jesse. <laughs> Unwrapping God's gift. We've already seen eternal life. I did not repeat that part, so that's not the answer this time. It's security. We have safety and security in Christ. The end of this verse, Jesus is speaking. He says, I give eternal life. And no one snatches them out of my hand. We are protected by God's power. 
in the gift of Christ, we have a gift that cannot be earned, but cannot be taken. When we have received Christ as Savior, we are stamped by the Holy Spirit for eternity in God's presence. We have a gift that cannot be taken. There's a lot of things in this world that can be taken away. Some of you have watched health taken away. Some of you have watched finances dwindle. Some of you have watched loved ones be taken away. Some of you have seen other things disappear or rot, be corrupted. Boys and girls, you'll lose at some point one of those marvelous Christmas presents, or it won't be as marvelous as it seems. But yet in Christ, we have something that can never be taken from us, never earned by us, never taken by any others. We have something that is secure in God. No one snatches them out of the Son's hand. Okay? And it's just a little reminder on that. Like, this is the eternal God. He's that strong. He's that great to keep us by His Spirit until that day. So what we sing is not great as my faithfulness, but great as thy faithfulness. That God keeps us in Him by His Spirit's power. We have a gift of security if we have trusted in Christ. And we see that revealed throughout the pages of Scripture that God keeps those that are truly His until the end. Although, Jesus had some that looked like His that proved to not be his. So we want to continue to walk with God by his Spirit's power as well. So what do we have? All right, I need an assistant. Come on up. This is a small box. We're ready to volunteer now. Let's see. Small box, the bow is almost bigger. Totally disregarded that bow. Ripped through. What do we have in here? A box. The great excitement of a box. Do you have any guesses on what's inside? No, no guesses. Okay. All right, a lollipop and another box. This is not Groundhog Day. All right, can you read that one? My writing's really bad, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Ephesians 2, two 18 to 10. 8 through 10. All right, you want to go stand next to Pastor Sam and have him read it? Or if you want to read any part of it, you just tell him. No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Good job. Give him a round of applause. In Ephesians 2, what we find is that we are gifted this salvation by God, not by our own works, and that it is by, received by faith in the Christ child. What we have is the gift of God for us that we could be rescued and saved not by our own works, but by God's power. And in Christ, we are now his masterpiece or his workmanship. Remember some of you from VBS this summer, all right, that we are created in Christ as his masterpiece for good works. We're not rescued by good works, but we are rescued for glorifying God by doing good works. We have a new purpose in life. Instead of trying to rescue ourselves, as I talked about last night, how that doesn't ever work, in Christ we are rescued by God, but we are called to and created to do good works. All right, I need an assistant to help unwrap God's present. One that has not. All right, come on up. While you're coming, I want you to be thinking about what might be inside this box and what we might find on the inside. I have to put a bow on it. Any guesses on what's inside this box? No, that's probably a safe thing. Yeah. 
At this point, what do we have? Another Another, box. A box of candy canes. And inside it? Matthew 1, 23 and 28, 20. Will you go join Pastor Sam and either you, you guys negotiate who's going to read, please. Feel comfortable reading any other? I can have you read 23. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Teaching them to observe all I have commanded you, and behold... I am with you always to the end of the age. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. And in there. Okay. You're good. You also have a cross. You see, we're at the bottom of the gift. We could have probably kept going and going and going and unwrapped further and further and further God's gift for us. But ultimately, in God's gift for us, what we have is God with us. The Bible begins with God amongst his people periodically. And then sin separates us from the good presence and walking in harmony with God. And throughout the pages of the Old Testament, we have the place where people would go to meet with God, the temple. And then the temple has different times. It's in disrepair, that it's, that it's gone, that the people aren't walking with God as they should. So then in Jesus, we have Emmanuel, which means God with us. We have God with us in the person of Christ. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, God with us. In the person of Christ, we have God with us. And yet, Jesus isn't walking around today. He ascended into heaven, but here at the end of Matthew 28, what he tells his people, his disciples, and for us today is, I am with you always to the end of the age, which we see playing out through the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, when Christ tells them to wait for his power, wait for his presence through the Spirit. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses, Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. In Christ, God's gift given for us, we have God with us. God with us on earth in the person of Christ, but now God with us as believers in the power and the person of the Holy Spirit, God with us. Us. And when we walk through the rest of the pages of the New Testament, we see the power of the Holy Spirit indwelling all believers because of the work of Christ on our behalf and giving us the Spirit. We have the Son giving us the Spirit and the Father giving us the Spirit. And then when we walk through the pages of the rest of the New Testament, remember the Bible begins with God with his people temporarily, then it goes into the temple where God's presence is in the temple and they have to go to God. And now we have God inside of us. We are the temples of God and we can commune with God spiritually and talk with him in those ways through prayer. But when we get to the end of the Bible, the second coming of Jesus to make all things well, what we have is God with his people forever in the new heavens and the new earth. So right now in the person of Christ, we've got a foretaste or an appetizer of being in the eternal presence and seeing God forever without the presence and the marring effects of sin. We have God with us now. And we look forward to being with God forever. There's so many other things that we could unwrap in God's gift for us given here at Christmas time. I hope that this has been a tasting of the goodness of what God has done for us in Christ. We're going to move into a final time of worship As we do so, if you want to talk or pray, I'm going to be available in the back. If you're watching online, you're welcome to comment. You're welcome to email me. You're welcome to use the contact form from our website, and we'd love to follow up with you. There's so much more to unwrap than what we did here today in God's gift given for us. But I hope at Christmas that you're considering what God has given you and that you're worshiping. Remember those not three kings, those wise men that came and bowed down and worshiped 
and delighted in God's gift given for them. And I hope that you've been able to do the same thing with us this morning. Let's rise now, stand, sing, and respond.